much. It'd be 15 seconds. Okay, we're all set. All right, thank you, Larry. Uh, the time is now 7.04. I'm calling the Public Works Committee meeting of the Common Council to order. Um, <clears throat> I'll just call out roll, if everybody doesn't mind with that. We have with us tonight, Mrs. Smith, Councilwoman Smith, Councilman Keegan, Councilman Livingston, Councilman Langella, Councilman Nidorides, uh, Councilman Serenides of the Public Works Committee. So we have a quorum and we also have with us tonight, Councilman Kubelman. <clears throat> we'll start off with public input. Do we have anybody that's, that wants to speak tonight? Uh, we do not. Okay. Any emails that want to be read? Monique? Anybody that wrote in or anything? No, I got no emails, Chairman. All right, thank you very much. All right, then we will close public input and move on right to new business. Item number one, approve the minutes of the Public Works Committee meeting of Tuesday, November 3rd, 2020. Would anybody like to move the item? Thank you, Mr. Livingston. Uh, any additions, corrections? Not seeing any, I'll put it up for a vote. All in favor? Any abstentions or, I see none. Okay, it's unanimous. Thank you, everyone. Item number two, approve the 2021 meeting dates for Public Works Committee. Uh, I don't know, what, oh, would anybody like to move that? Thank you, Ms. Smith. Did anybody get a chance to look through it? Any uh, questions? Yeah, I mean, just Mr. Chair, I mean, I assume that if and when we can go back to live, we will. It says they're all video, but I hope we understand that that doesn't necessarily have to be the case, hopefully. Uh, I agree with you, Tom, and I think for now they were just, everybody was erring on the side of, possible COVID going forward. But yes, uh, as soon as we do have the ability to go back to meeting live, I'm all for it. As far as like the dates themselves, you know, I, I know there was a little bit of question about having a meeting on election day. Obviously we're gonna have that happen again um, and come November, that'll be a game time decision as, as long as there's nothing pressing or something in media that needs to be met or voted on. We won't have a meeting that day as far as I'm concerned. Um, September 7th is the day after Labor Day. I don't think anybody has anything big going on that they can't make that meeting, right? <laughs> so I'm assuming the rest of the days would be fine. But again, if we have light agendas, like always, we will cancel meetings with plenty of notice to the public. So that being said, all in favor? Once again, seems unanimous. Thank you very much. All right, now item number three A and B, I'm gonna move all together if everybody's okay with. With that, <clears throat> you have plenty of time because it's a lot of reading, so do whatever you have to do. I'll let you know when I'm done. Item three A, authorize the mayor, Harry W. Rilling, to execute any and all documents necessary for the following transaction for the joint memorandum of Jessica Casey, Steve Kleppen, Anthony Carr, and Vanessa Valderez dated November 24th, 2020. Item 3AI, for the City of Norwalk to convey the following easement to Sono TOD LLC for consideration of one, $129,233. Item 3AI1, a driveway easement approximately 7,424 square feet as depicted in the easement map, depicting proposal, proposed driveway easement over land of the city of Norwalk, 30 Monroe Street, prepared for Sono TOD LLC, 1 Chestnut Street, 
in all of Connecticut, scale one inch equals 20 feet, dated November 24th, 2020, William W. Seymour and Associates PC revised to include the 328 square feet of one Chestnut Street to the to first be conveyed from Sono TOD LLC to the city of Naw, authorized in agenda item three III. Item three AI two, a ramp easement approximately 759 square feet as depicted in the easement map depicting proposed ramp easement over land of the city of Norwalk, 30 Monroe Street, prepared for Sono TOD LLC, one Chestnut Street, Norwalk, Connecticut, scale one inch equals 20. B, dated November 24th, 2020, William W. Seymour and Associates, PC. Item 3A, I3, a sidewalk easement, approximately 2,129 square feet, plus 179 square feet as depicted in the easement map depicting proposed sidewalk easement over land of the city of Norwalk, 30 Monroe Street, prepared for Sono TOD LLC, 1 Chestnut Street, Norwalk, Connecticut, scale one inch equals 20 feet, dated November 24th, 2020, William W. Seymour and Associates PC. And item 3AII, for Sono TOD LLC to convey the following easement to the city of Norwalk for consideration of $1, a sidewalk easement approximately 656 square feet plus 183 square feet as depicted in the easement map depicting proposed sidewalk easement grant to the city of Norwalk, 30 Monroe Street over the land of Sono TOD LLC, 1 Chestnut Street, Norwalk, Connecticut, scale one inch equals 20 feet dated November 24, 2020, William W. Seymour and Associates, PC. I don't, oh, sorry, 3A III for the city of Norwalk to acquire fee simple title from Sono TOD LLC and, and to approximately 328 square feet of land of one Chestnut Street as depicted in the comp compilation plan depicting conveyance parcel to be conveyed to the city of Norwalk by Sono TOD LLC, 1 Chestnut Street, Norwalk, Connecticut, scale 1 inch equals 20 feet, dated November 24, 2020, William W. Seymour and Associates, PC, item 3B, 8-24 referral, Department of Public Works conveyance of easement Sono TOD LLC over portions of 30 Monroe Street and acquisitions of easement and land from Sono TOD LLC over a portion of one Chestnut Street per the joint memorandum of Jessica Casey, Steve Clepp, and Anthony Carr, and Vanessa Valderez dated 20, November 24, 2020, report and recommendations. Whew. All right, I'm going to take a water break. Would anybody like to move that item? Everybody? Fantastic. <laughs> Miss Smith, thank you. <laughs> Uh, all right. So obviously, this was an item that came before us several months ago. It started off as right of entry, and now we're moving on to the easement portion of it. We have with us tonight Anthony Carr, Vanessa Valderez, and Jessica Case, who can all speak on it. And they do have some um, pictures that we could see in uh, layouts. So that being said, Anthony. Sure, and Mr. Chairman, before I turn it over to Ms. Casey uh, and, and Vanessa, if she'd like to opine, just to give the committee uh, a, a minute, uh, broad brush overview of how we got here. Uh, when this developer had come and approached the city uh, for this project, the, um, the parcel in which they're, they're constructing, they need access to, to store their equipment and to actually construct the work. Um, they had to cross and utilize a city-owned property, which cannot be accessed by a private entity like a contractor by means of an encroachment permit, which is strictly for the right of way. We had to, at the time, uh, prepare, and I'm sure everybody remembers, but uh, right of entry agreements to allow the developer, the private entity, non-city entity, to cross the city's property and also use that area to stage um, construction equipment and materials. So that's why they needed a right of entry versus an encroachment permit, which again is for work within the right of way. Uh, they needed the right of entry uh, agreements uh, in order to obtain their foundation permit because they cannot construct their building foundations without again crossing city property and without staging and storing their construction vehicles. So there was a right of entry agreement and also the foundation permit. O over the last few months, um, the city has been working with the developer to advance the project uh, to what you see before you tonight, which now results in 
numerous easements, driveway easements, ramp easement, uh, sidewalk easement. Um, I'll let Miss Casey go into a little bit more detail, and Vanessa, obviously, if you want to opine on that too. But that's basically the story of how we got to tonight. Um, and without further ado, I'll turn it over to Jessica to kind of explain uh, what the easements mean and, and why they're needed. Thank you, Anthony. You're welcome, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Jessica, can you hear Great. me? Great. Yep. Let me just share my screen here. So I think if we could take them um, right from the top, um, starting with the first easement, which is the 7,424 square feet of city property at 30 Monroe Street. Um, the subject, uh, the entrance driveway to the train station parking lot. So can everyone see my screen here? Uh, I can. Yes. Okay, great. So um, you would have received in your packet a plan, a site plan that looks like the one that's on the screen currently with the shaded area. This shaded area shows the entrance of the uh, development or the entrance to the railroad place train station, Sono train station. It is the access for the second level of parking um, that is in the chestnut development. Um, just to backtrack for one second so that we're all on the same page, the, and thank you to Anthony for giving us background as I move around the house to get away from the barking dog here. Um, we have a development with 122 residential units, 5,600 square feet of retail space, and 11,000 square feet of office space. Uh, it's proposed at Monroe and Chestnut. They have um, been begun work on the foundation permit, and they have been working with all the city departments to be able to advance to this stage in the game. What you see ahead of you is the first easement that we're talking about, which is, as I said, the 7,424 square feet. It is the entrance off of Monroe that will um, allow residents and Excuse workers me, to- Jessica? Yeah. I'm sorry to interrupt. I wouldn't have it if it wasn't this important. Uh, Larry, can you hear me? Uh, yes. We have Darlene Young, but she's on as, a, as an attendee. Is there any way to move her over to the panelist side? Done. Thank you very much. All right, sorry about that, Jessica. No problem at all. Thanks, George. Um, so this is where the access to the second level of parking will uh, will come for the development itself. And if you remember in May, we were talking about two levels of parking. The first level of parking is accessed off of Chestnut Street, which is through uh, where my cursor is showing here. And the second level of parking is actually accessed through um, this driveway easement, this proposed driveway easement, which will bring us to the egress ingress uh, point of the second level of the garage. So if we were to look and I'm going to switch my screen here and I'm hoping that you'll be able to see it. Did you see my screen switch? I'm still looking at the same picture. You're still looking at the same picture. Let me see. New picture? Yes. Yes. Great. So what we're, what we're talking about when we talk about the first easement, the 7,424 square feet, is this driveway here. Access and to this driveway as my cursor is showing it. So this is the first easement. I'm going to move on to the Jessica, second. Jessica, excuse yep. me, it's Tom. So just yep. to be clear, because I, I think some of us like myself think of this as a road, but it's really not a road. It's a driveway into that lot, right? That's right. So originally when we started looking at this project, there was discussion about actually turning this particular uh, railroad place access point into a road. And at that particular point in time, we had said, you know, we would eventually like to transfer this into a road, create a road, but we don't really have a master plan for the whole entire area, including the larger parking lot for the Sono train station. And if we were to create a road today, then it may not take into consideration the future development coming down the road. And so we should really look at the area as a master plan in total to be able to determine what the configuration of that road looks like. Um, so at this particular moment in time, the reason for the easements and the reason for the actual right of way entry 
that we that you approved in May is because this is not a roadway. This is actually a parcel. It's a city owned parcel. If it was a roadway, then it would be a different application. They would be asking for a curb cut instead of an easement. But because it is a, a city owned parcel, that is the reason for the actual easement. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. Let me ask you this, though, um, since we haven't done the master plan for this, are we preserving enough flexibility or we're not concerned that, that this would be an issue later on? We might have done something else with this street. Um, so I think we've taken into can, we don't know exactly what's going to happen, but we do know that there's potential enough to um, to that there's opportunity in this area. And I think that the plan that you see before you really takes that into consideration. And an example of that is that part of what we're going to be talking about is that uh, Spinnaker has agreed to a number of improvements that we talked about previously in May, $250,000 worth of streetscape improvements, sidewalk improvements. And part of that is actually widening the mouth of railroad place where it meets Monroe so that um, the right hand traffic turning traffic actually flows a lot easier. So the configuration that you see in front of you takes into consideration um, not only the traffic for the actual residential apartment, but also getting um, the buses in and out easier as well as the, the um, commuter parking. Gotcha, thanks. No problem. So I'm just going to stop sharing my screen for a second and share again um, on the second easement that we're talking about. So Jessica, on that first one, that access is still going to be open on either end, correct? So if they come in on the um, Monroe side, they could go through the front of the train station or the southbound side and end up on Henry Street extension, correct? That's correct. Yep. So if you see the screen here, they would come in on Monroe um, and then they would, you could take a left through the Sono train station parking lot and you would come out to Henry Street. Perfect. So it won't hamper any traffic flow in that area. No, not, not anticipated to impact any traffic. Hey, um, Mr. Chairman, this, uh, may I ask a question? Sure. Um, just a question, Jessica, this is being built to a standard that if we want to turn this into a street at some point, we're not uh, limiting ourselves because of the way that they're doing their development, correct? Uh, that is my understanding. And we've been talking a lot with DPW, obviously, they've been at the table for all the discussions. Um, and that hasn't come up as a as a concern or an issue. Um, if anything, we've actually incorporated more of the city standard into the uh, into the mouth of where um, into the mouth of the Sono train station from Monroe Street to be able to ensure that the traffic can move uh, can move smoothly through there. But we've done the due diligence to know that uh, that moving forward to turn it into a street that we're not uh, hampering ourselves, correct? Uh, I believe so, yes, but I'll ask Vanessa to confirm. Okay, thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. So to answer your question, they are really not building this road. The only portion that they are doing is the one that they're gonna convey to us, that is that right turn. So actually that driveway is existing. Um, the only thing that we are requesting as part of the approval from DPW is that they're going to build an overlay the area that they're going to be working on after. Um, so as of now, it's just going to keep the conditions as existing. In the future, if for whatever reason, if we're going to bring that road to a public road, then we have to put a kind of some study in, in, see what we have there, and maybe we'll need to bring the asphalt to a different level. Um, so, but would not be impossible. So it has the width that we need that is more important. Plus we're kind of limited also on the other side because it's the state right of way. But as of now, they are not really building the road. The only thing that they're gonna build is that uh, right lane that will be in the other one. They're gonna just move an overlay based on our specifications. Yeah, I think that's what I was driving at. We're maintaining the width to be able to build a road, to turn it into a public road at some point, if need be? We are actually kind of, there is a little bit of a, a shrinking. Um, if you, uh, Jessica, if you can put your mouse right at the end of the driveway, uh, I'm sorry, well, on the ramp that goes to the building, 
you see this is yeah so that that lead this is kind of the whole wave and then when you get to the building that part is already kind of the curve is a little bit out but we have enough wave and then at the bottom we are getting that photo a uh, second lane so we can make the right turn okay thank you appreciate the Hello. info Great, so I'm going to move on to the second easement that you have in the memo. So this is an easement of 759 square feet um, and it is the ramp uh, ingress and egress easement um, specifically for the second level uh, garage access. And this is shaded in this area here so it's where the drive, it was where railway place would then connect into the actual development itself. And if we were to look at it from the rendering standpoint, we would see that here. This is the 759 square feet. Okay. The third easement is this easement here, um, which is uh, 2,129 square feet um, plus 179 square feet, which is actually this easement shaded. You can see it here, as well as this easement here. Oh, excuse me, that's not true. This easement here. So this is the this is the 2,129 square feet, and then this is the 179 square feet here. So this is for landscaping purposes. And again, if we were to go back to the shot here that you see, um, you would see that the landscaping here where my cursor is, is going to happen in that area as well as the sidewalk. And can't then this it. little area yes, here. Yes, we can't see oh, you can't see it, I'm see sorry. It. Yeah. Let's see, there you go. So right where my cursor is here, as well as here. Okay, and then Finally, uh, finally, the last paragraph in your memo. Speaks to a conveyance of the sidewalk easement here. So this is actually the Spinnaker owned parcel. Um, and what you're seeing here is the square footage, the 328 square feet that we would, um, that Spinnaker would convey to the city. So this is the, this is the last piece of what George had read out. So we have a few things going on. One is the driveway into the actual rail, railroad place into the Sono train station, which is the a permanent easement. We have the we have the ramp easement, which is also a permanent easement here that we're talking about. The third piece is the sidewalk easement with the shaded pieces that I just explained, the 2,129 plus 176, which is the landscaping piece. And then this last easement is, um, the last piece is the sidewalk piece here. So a few different moving parts to be able to make this happen. Um, and really the goal and the objective is the permanent easement would be to allow residents to access the second level of parking in the Spinnaker building, one chestnut, um, which includes the driveway and the ramp. And the other pieces speak to the landscaping and speak to the um, sidewalk construction that Spinnaker has agreed to as part of the project. So the work that they'll be doing is the 250000 dollars worth of sidewalk improvements and sidewalk construction um, in addition to the landscaping uh, throughout the project itself, which is not included in the 250000 And if we were to switch back to 
if we were to switch back to the rendering, and I'm not sure if you can see this, but I will share my screen. Let's see, here we go. This is actually the project from the corner of Monroe and Chestnut. And you can see just to the right of the Sono is where the entrance would be for the vehicle traffic um, to get up to the second level of parking and also to get into the Sono train station. But you can see that um, basically what we're asking Spinnaker to do and what they've agreed to do as part of the site plan approval is to do the landscaping that really activates Monroe and activates Chestnut to be able to allow a better connectivity from um, Sono, Washington area and 19 day, as well as Washington village up to the actual train station itself. So not only are we seeing the residential office and retail piece of this, but we're also seeing the connectivity piece. And by, um, by bringing forward these easements, it, uh, it speaks to the access for the residents to be able to get to the parking, but it also speaks to the access of the pedestrians to be able to get to the train station as well. Can I ask a question? Thank you, Jess. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Jess, could you go back to the rendering on the Railroad Avenue side? Can you see it? Yeah, so this, I don't know, this is this my, look, the way I look at it. Um, I can't tell perspective. See where that car is by the driveway on the Railroad Avenue? Here? No, the other one, that one. This so one? Is that curb, see the curb there? Does that line up with the curb below? I mean, for the other side of the driveway? If you follow it down towards the police station, does that curb line up the other way, right? Oh, this way here? Yeah, does that curb, these curbs, looks like the one uh, towards the south. Yeah, go up, oh, go up a little further, other way. Yeah, I'm just looking at this curb. Did, the, did these curbs, like the one here by the car, is, is this as visual that it looks like it goes out further than the one on the other side of there where that woman is? Well, well, I think it's just the red. I think it's just it this. Oh, Actually, go ahead. If you look at the Eastman map, it shows that they are aligned. If you look they are. Okay. I couldn't tell from the map. That's what, that was my question. Yes. Make sure they're aligned. Yeah. Thank Let's you. see. Oh, okay. Is that, can, you see, can you is see that other line time? here, which will confuse me? It looked like they're lined up, but then you see this one here. Is that sometimes that what happened is, is it that the two clerks are aligned there? There. So you, have to, you have that line here. That you're going on but if you keep going up to the left it seems like it goes in well that what happened is that 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 curb is just matching what kind of is existing there i see what you're saying this is what you're talking about tom yeah yeah, just yeah this is not this is not a line yet but again remember that we haven't approved those drawings yet dpw well, usually would come in that so we're probably going to ask them to kind of change a little bit the radius of that so there's not a bump out right so it will align yeah so that will be part of when they go for it. so the the drawings that we're seeing the, there is not all after we receive the drawings for approval for site work those are the kind of things that dpw ended up commenting back okay. so we'll see but it's a parking space is what it has there so although it looks like that is out. There is a parallel parking in there. So actually the car will be protecting that curb. You know what I mean? Okay, I see. And you guys will be- It's just that the rendering is not showing existing on the other side. Yeah. And that's kind of on the drawing. So it's- that, actually, That's what I'm asking about. Yeah, okay. yeah, so although it doesn't align with the curb, it is aligning with the parallel parking that we have there. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other questions? Mr. Chairman, may I ask a question? Sure. Yeah, the these easements, and this may be a Darren question, uh, granting any of these easements, does this put us into any issue if we do choose to turn this into a public roadway at some point? Um. <clears throat> I don't, I don't perceive a, 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 an issue, uh, you know, to the extent that there's any concern, we can address it right in the draft of the, the easement document itself that the, and it may actually be in there. There were a lot of iterations to this. Um, and I know at one point, one of the iterations made reference to that the easement, the driveway easement would extinguish if 
um, the driveway ever became a public road. If that somehow made it out of it, we can include it back in. Well, I'm just curious as to how that how how that mechanism would work. Should we choose to turn this into a public roadway, how the sidewalk easements, uh, the landscaping easement, the driveway easement would all uh, conform at that point and whether or not we're we're putting ourselves in an exposure uh, position to not being able to turn this into a roadway because of, you know, the the. Uh, Spinnaker being able to say, look, we have easements on this, so. <clears throat> Councilman, not to be honest with you, I, I didn't approach it from that perspective. Um, uh, and, and it wasn't part of, of what, um, you know, what my, the way I was asked to, to look at it. Um, so I don't have an answer uh, at, at the moment, at whether, it, you know, I mean, at the end of the day, um, to the extent that there were any encumbrances uh, over the land, the city ultimately has uh, the power of eminent domain. So there's there's no um, uh, in, uh, insurmountable impediment to to making that a public roadway. Um, but it, it just wasn't the way we we, we I, I had looked at it. Um, we did divide out the easements and separated them out into three different easements with the first easement uh, being um, drawn out as just the driveway area. And it is originally uh, mapped out as the driveway and the ramp as one easement area. And we separated it out because it seemed to make more sense down the road um, in the event that the actual driveway itself became a public road, uh, but we didn't, take that deep of a dive, or I didn't take that deep of a dive into it. Thank you. Okay, any other questions? All right, Seeing, hearing none, I'll put it to a vote. All in favor? Aye. Oh, and let the record show. Uh, Monique, I, I hope you got Darlene once you join the meeting. All right. Uh, anyone opposed or any abstentions? Seeing none, seems unanimous. All right. So now we're going to refer this to the Planning Commission for their recommendation. And uh, I'll come to the council meeting following that to the full council. Okay. Item number four <clears throat> authorize the purchasing agent to issue a purchase order. The Gengris Ford LLC, Plainville, Connecticut, for the purchase of one 2020 Ford Escape for a price not to exceed $23,873.80, account noted. Uh, would anybody like to move that item? Thank you, Manny. Let the record show. Mr. Langella move the item. And do we have any questions? Anthony, can you tell us a little bit about it? Yes, Mr. Chairman. Um, the purchase of this vehicle uh, is for the a, a TMP uh, replacement vehicle, which obviously our fleet, DPW's fleet, uh, coordinates with each department and has a rolling stock program or a rolling stock list of what vehicles need to be replaced. Um, this particular replacement vehicle uh, is for TMP and it is for the traffic signal technician. Uh, the reason why it's a 2024 Escape and not a typical sedan is because there's equipment that he needs to bring out to the field uh, during maintenance, various maintenance activities. So that's what this vehicle is for. And we work again, our fleet services works, works very closely with each department to understand their needs. Uh, like the building department may need or, or may need a, a hatchback or SUV because they go out, their plumbing inspector, or their electrical inspector has certain instrumentation and, and, and devices they take out with them. So this is really a replacement vehicle for TMP. Did you look at a hybrid version? Uh, we did not particular time for, the, for this, um, for this vehicle. I don't believe, I don't, I don't, I don't believe it's a hybrid. I could check the purchase order. Uh, it didn't look like it on the purchase order. Yeah, I don't, Tom, I don't, I, I don't, I don't believe it is to, to be quite honest with you. Um, I mean, it's something we could, we, we could look at. So I thought we were trying to move to a hybrids. 
Yes, for the for the for the pool vehicles, absolutely. That's what we were starting off with, with just the pool vehicles, and with and with the with the staff vehicles for the rotation of the fleet, just for pool pool purposes. I mean, is there a reason we wouldn't look at hybrid for this? So they cost more money, I and mean, they usually do. I think. Yes, Hi hybrids are on average another three to five thousand dollars. And and to be completely honest with you, Tom, I don't know what the budget was uh, in TMP for this vehicle, but I know the budget typically is a concern. Uh, but they are about five thousand dollars more, three to five thousand dollars. Okay. Um, any other questions? All right. All in favor? Aye. All right. It's unanimous. Thank you. I'll move item five A and five B together. <clears throat> Authorize the mayor, Harry W. Rilling, to enter into an agreement with Deering Construction, Inc. for State Project 102-350 Norwalk River Valley Trail, Phase 2 Federal Aid Project Number PEDS-222 for an amount not to exceed $2,924,135.11, Federal TA Grants Accounts Noted. Item 5B, authorize the Chief of Operation and Public Works to execute orders on the contract with Deering Construction Inc. for State Project 102-350 Norwalk River Valley Trail Phase 2 Federal Aid Project Number PEDS 222 for an amount not to exceed $292,413.50. Federal TA accounts noted. Would anybody like to move this item? Thank you, Mr. Livingston. Um, so this is something that, again, we've seen once before, before I open it up. We're, we're finally getting down to the construction part of the, the project. And it's great to see it moving along. Who wants to speak on it? Mr. Chairman, uh, I'll add a few comments uh, before I turn over to Mr. Yosak in case I miss anything. But uh, just as a refresher, um, this is the Norwalk River Valley Trail Phase 2. Uh, this is a federally funded project through the Transportation Alternatives, or short, TA for short, uh, Federal Grant Program. Uh, this is an 80% match, meaning that the federal government gives us 80% of the construction costs and the local funds or the city funds account for 20%. Um, the project is, a, is approximately uh, one mile, and a, one, and a mile, one and a quarter miles, excuse me. Uh, and it goes from Union Park uh, to New Canaan Avenue by the Eversource substation. Uh, this is referred to as the missing link, uh, which is the, there's an existing trail that runs along the Norwalk River and comes out at Broad Street. And there, this segment of, of River Trail will now connect um, that, that missing link, that they call it, uh, of the River, River Valley Trail. Uh, again, this is for construction, and the grant is specifically going towards the construction costs. So none of the, none of the funding that we're receiving from the federal government, and it's administered through the state, i.e. CONDOT, uh, none of the funding that we're receiving is going towards design. This is strictly all going to construction. So it's an 80-20 split, federal to local, and it's part of the TA federal grant uh, program. Uh, Mike, if I missed anything or anybody else, please feel free to opine. I think you have everything, Anthony. Uh, if there's any other questions, I'm, I'll uh, be happy to answer them. Mr. Livingston? Yeah, a couple of questions. Hey, Mike, um, what's the timing? Uh, we're looking at starting this in April, and it's probably about eight months, so it should be finished by uh, September, October. Well, that's great. And the other thing I just want to ask you about, I, I see in your note here to Anthony and Vanessa, I don't know if I'm reading this right, that, that you're worried about costs. Is there uh, enough money for this? That there, yeah, there, there's, enough, there's enough money for it uh, now. What we're looking at is one of, there's one item that's in there that's uh, rather expensive. So we're, we'll be looking at some alternatives for that possibly. Yeah. Mike, is that is that the uh, retaining is that the retaining wall type? The, the, the type no, the, it's it's actually the pedestrian rail. The rail, okay. But but that's not going to hold up the project, right? It, no, there's enough money uh, to to cover the project. Uh, we're just looking at uh, some cost savings that this the state and the city will save on. So, right. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Any other questions? Seeing none, all in favor? Does that help me, Mark? 
Thank you. Aye. Yes. All right. That's unanimous. Thank you. <clears throat> Item number six. <clears throat> Excuse me. Authorize the mayor, Harry W. Willing, to execute a two year extension to the April 2019 agreement for pavement management and consulting services between the city of Norwalk and Van Venez Hang Hangen Brussling Inc. BHB for an annual sum not to exceed $250,000 per year. Accounts noted. This is part of our annual payment management program that we have going on. We've been using this company for several years. Uh, who would like to move the item? Thank you, Mr. Langella. Uh, any questions? Yeah, uh, Tony, uh, Anthony, how, how are we doing with hiring? I mean, I guess this relates to the fact that it's tough to get the PEs. Or... Um, as, as for right now, we actually um, promoted our uh, a few of the junior engineers up to assistant engineer and permanent engineer. So we're very, uh, very excited about that. Um, the postings have not been um, released yet from uh, personnel for the junior engineers, but we have promoted internally and we do have a new senior uh, civil engineer starting after the holidays. Uh, that senior civil engineer is the person that we will be replacing Vanessa, Vanessa's old position. So we will have a third senior civil engineer to help Drew and Paul Sotnik uh, with the workload. Um, but other than that, we haven't received the authorization yet and we haven't had the, uh, the posting um, placed out for junior engineer from personnel. But personnel has worked with us to fill uh, a lot of the other positions in operations and currently in parks, which was the, was the primary concern as we go into the, the fall and the winter operations. Okay, good, because my recollection with this is, I mean, this is desperately needed work, but you just didn't have the manpower. And I was- uh, because I think that, it, sorry, excuse me. Tom, yeah. I think you're just getting confused with that was the inspection that we're gonna, we actually have an RFP out for that. This is for our pavement manage and consulting. So this is that three-year contract that you guys approve. Um, so what a VHB does, they do uh, evaluation of all our roads. And then it's what happened is based on that recollection that we have our five-year forecast. So a portion of that is for that plus also when they come and they do the quality control while we are paving. So we have this contract going on for, I don't know, probably 20 years. Um, the only thing is that we got this new one with VHB last year, uh, but it's a two year extension. So just to make uh, very easy for Deering, instead of just going through the extension, we're bringing up to your attention that we're gonna add the two year agreement that you guys approved last year. But this is not for the inspection of the paving. Um, you guys are gonna see that because hopefully in January, because we have the RFP out and do it next week. So this is not something you would have done in house anyway then? Correct. Okay. Right. Sorry, Tom. I, I, thought you were mistake, just, but... I thought you were just asking about the, the, the hiring in general. So I figured- Well, I, I was, cause I thought they were related. <laughs> I'm still curious about the hiring. I think we all are. So, so. It's helpful, thank you. And sure. it's also on the call. So do they wanna add a little bit more to what VHB does for us under this paper management service? Yeah, I just wanted to say that they they are at the asphalt plant testing the asphalt um, before that goes out. They're also testing compaction in the field uh, with uh, nuclear devices um, whenever, uh, whenever we pave. And they also provide us the uh, um, the software that allows us to uh, generate that five-year forecast um, on an annual basis, along with the survey that, that Vanessa already stated, where they evaluate all of our streets. So we evaluate, we have them evaluate 25% of our streets each year over the course of four years, so that no street hasn't been evaluated within uh, for any more than um, four years at a time, um, which gives us our pavement condition index and our means of measuring, you know, how we're doing with paving and which roads need work, which ones um, need um, pavement preservation techniques versus, um, versus uh, hard paving. And although we ask for not to exceed $250,000 per year, uh, last year we only spent, um, uh, I think, 100000 
uh, for 2019. So, so we're not we're not overspending. We're we're underspending what what we what our expectations are. Um, we're just obligated as part of the contract to update the uh, schedule of fees and to update the account numbers as they become available to us. Now, Drew, have we had any problem with them falling behind or the slacking on the schedule a little bit with the COVID slowdown? Or have they been keeping up with all our projects? No, all of our consultants have been uh, extremely helpful, um, particularly because of COVID. So whether it be the uh, tie and bond doing the field inspection work for us or uh, VHB doing the uh, compaction testing in the field and the testing at the, at the, at the plant, we have that, we have that peace of mind that, uh, that we're getting good product uh, out there, regardless of the, the chaos that, that, uh, that, um, a lot of us are going through in having shuffling our schedules and, and things of that nature. That's good. Uh, I just want to add one thing also that is uh, good about this program is that this way also when we justify the, for the residents which roads we are paving is not only based in our own judgment. There is a whole program behind. So I think this is very important why Street X is set up to be paved three years from now and not next week because there is this whole study that happens. Thank you. Thank you, Vanessa. Thank you, Drew. Uh, any other questions? All right, seeing none, I'll put it to a vote. All in favor? Yes. Seems unanimous. Thank you. All right, that ends with new business and moving on to information and discussion. A, discussion one, project status for a sediment removal contract update. Yes, Mr. Chairman, um, Vanessa and Drew, please feel free to jump in. The, uh, we have completed three out of the five water courses uh, locations, uh, Friendly, Friendly Road, Lloyd Road, and I believe we just, um, excuse me, Friendly Hunters. Hunters, right, correct. We finished three out of the five and we'll be moving to June and Keeley next. Drew? That's correct. Yep. Okay. So, so that work can go throughout the winter, as I've stated before, uh, unless we have a, a major blizzard in this 24 inches of snow and the construction vehicles can't maneuver uh, within the site. Um, otherwise, we can continue working throughout the winter, even in very cool conditions. Uh, so that project's going very well. And uh, it, was, it was a tough, tough push, but engineering did a fantastic job getting the, all the permits from Army Corps and Connecticut Deep. And uh, that, that was a good, good, pro good project. And it's going very well. No major no major issues um, on schedule and, and within budget. Yep. We've had a good year for it too. The weather has been cooperating. Nice to recent rainstorm. Uh, do we just roll right into item B or does anybody have any questions about the sediment removal? Okay. Uh, item B, Dreamy Hollow Drainage System Improvement Update. Okay, um, Mr. Chairman and committee, this is the flood study that was commissioned for the Dreamy Hollow Estate, better known as the Friendly Pond area. Uh, the consultant is progressing with their design and we expect to have a set of bid documents out in winter of 2021 with construction to start in summer of 2021. And that project is estimated right now at three and a half million dollars construction cost. We anticipate it will come in lower, but it's a very conservative estimate based on the, 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 the level of, of progress of the plans. Um, as the plans get more detailed and we go from the 60 to 90% stage and then the 100%, uh, the consultant will do a final construction cost estimate. So we'll know what to expect um, before the project's put out to bid. Uh, we don't anticipate on um, being over budget. And again, if the bids did come back higher, we would obviously reevaluate re and, and perform some value engineering to make sure that there is some, there are the improvements completed that do matter. So we'll, we'll see, but we don't expect to be over budget, which is why we put a conservative number in uh, that the mayor and common council approved last year for the $4 million. Well, you guys have definitely definitely been doing a great job keeping under budget, so that's great. And again, with this rainfall we had the other day, I, I didn't get any complaints. I don't know if anybody else did or calls regarding flooding issues. So whatever whatever is being done is working and helping, which is fantastic. Uh, any questions or, okay. C, drainage curb, sidewalk and paving update. 
Um, I guess we got a lot of the drainage out of the way already. <laughs> the big part, <laughs> curving, sidewalks, and paving. Uh, I know I drive around the city all day long, and I've been seeing a lot of roads being paved, sidewalks being redone, and uh, curving. So far, again, the weather's been holding out. I know the asphalt plants are still open. Uh, Anthony, tell us a little bit about it. How are we doing yes. this year? Okay, so qualitatively, um, from the amount of contracts that this committee approves, and ultimately the Common Council in full and the mayor executing, uh, I knew since I started in March, I've been kind of keeping it my own um, personal tally of just kind of the work and, and, and being intimate with the, with the projects. I said, you know what, we, it'd be a good idea at, at the end of the year to give uh, the, the Common Council and the Public Works Committee and the mayor's office an update of metrics. And, you know, we, we think we're doing a lot. We think we're doing a great job. And I, and I believe we, we certainly are. But it's nice when you actually have metrics to compare to as a baseline. So I just wanted to take an opportunity to, to thank my staff for, for, for the fantastic work they're doing, but, but also to support it with, with the following metrics. So item C has drainage, concrete, sidewalk, and paving. So I'll take it sheet by sheet. I'm not going to go into detail with the numbers, but I'm going to give you the highlights and I'll give you the bottom line up front. The, uh, the drainage, we, we invested about a million and a half dollars into 25 roads. And what this drainage was, it's not the Rondano contract that the uh, committee recently approved. This was work that was performed on a time and material basis from during construction. So when they were out there paving and we encountered a problem or, or operations of WPCA, camera inspected the lines and said, okay, this storm sewer is rotting, it's failing, it's breaking, time to replace it rightfully before we reconstruct the road or mill and resurface the road, we fix the subsurface utilities. Uh, when you do time and materials with a contractor, uh, if you have an inspector out there and, and, and you keep them honest, um, it, it could be a win-win. Uh, sometimes time material is not always the most cost advantageous for the city or any municipality for that matter, which is why we ended up issuing the drainage contract. So that million and a half that we invested for the drainage throughout 25 roads, uh, we will be able to reduce that number and most likely improve more roads for less of the cost under the Rondano drainage contract that the committee approved a few months back, uh, which is just for drainage. So our plan thinking ahead is to inspect the drainage on the roads prior to paving, fix the drainage with the drainage contractor, and then the paving contractor goes in and paves. So instead of Deering having to stop, rightfully so, fix the utilities, lag and schedule, and then go back and pave we're already going to have that work um, done in advance. Obviously, this program is at the infancy, but we're making little tweaks to optimize our paving and work in the right of way. So, Anthony, that sorry to interrupt you. But yes. is that going to cut down on once the road gets paved and it's nice and, and brand new, they come along and start cutting it up again? Will that help us That's, out? With that, that, that will help us at the, at the city, uh, on the city level. Now, we can't necessarily stop a private development from doing that, although there is a two year moratorium on any newly paved roads um, and obviously any emergency work that needs to get done from the utility companies, which always seems to happen after you pave a new road, even, even in New York, uh, that seems to happen across the board. But we do expect that million and a half dollars to shrink or to get, be reduced. And we expect to buy more drainage work for more roads at a lower cost, which is why engineering put out that drainage contract. Um, we have no baseline to compare it to. Next year, we can look back and say, okay, from 2020 to 2021, what do we do? But more so on the sidewalks and the paving, what we did was we compared calendar years, not fiscal years. Uh, we compared calendar years, January 1st to December 30th. Obviously, we're not at December 30th for this year yet, but we forecasted. So just to give you a breakdown for the sidewalk, in 2019, uh, we installed about 1.3 miles of sidewalk. Uh, we are forecasted to install, and, and curbing, excuse me. Uh, we are forecasted to finish this year with 2.9 miles, which is 123% increase for curbs and sidewalks. Again, that's in part really from the great work of the staff and also the mayor and the common council approving the increased budget for the curb and sidewalks. Uh, so we did increase it from 1.3 miles to 2.9. That information summarized in your packets. Uh, we made the tables very easy to understand um, because there's a lot of numbers on there and a lot of information. Uh, more so with the paving. In 2019, uh, we paved approximately 7.6 miles. That's center line miles. That's drawing a line right down the middle of the street, no matter how wide the street is. Um, we did about 42 roads or 42 road segments. In 2020, we're forecasted by the end of this year, and the plants close December 18th, by the way, the asphalt plants. Uh, we're forecasted to pave 9.94 uh, miles. Again, last year was 7.6 uh, and 44 road segments. So that's a little bit more. Uh, it's a 5% increase in the number of road segments, but it is a 30% increase in the center line length of roadways and the tonnage of asphalt that we put down. So the 5% is not as important because you could argue, well, some roads are wider than others, some roads are longer than others, 
but we are we we did pave approximately 30 percent more in asphalt and 30 percent more in length again the center line length from 2019 to 2020. Anthony, and it's, really, it's really impressive i mean what do you attribute that to i mean it's a big increase uh, I'll, I'll i'll be honest with you we've had pretty much the same budget um right i mean we get about five to six million dollars approved every year um i would say starting from the top um the mayor and the common council approving the budget but then also in the department uh the change in leadership um again i'm only going from march 2019 uh, when i came in we took a, a fresher look at how we do things uh, i brought my experience from my planes um and then obviously we have seasoned engineers there like drew and paul have been here for a very long time and obviously i do attribute it to um having a change with the principal engineer again we took a fresh look we said what well, how can we do this better how can we optimize um I, I, I've met with staff and I, I want to understand what, what in the program works, what doesn't work, what can we do better, uh, which is why you see little tweaks. Um, I have to say, no luck, they do it right. Um, every municipality I've worked for, they just mill and pave the road. Um, they don't do curbs and sidewalks with it. And then kind of this comes down a week later and usually has an emergency repair to do. But um, here in Norwalk, we have a pavement management program for about 20 years. It's the Bible. It's, it, it dictates the five-year forecast, which changes very slightly um based on let's say other utility companies or private developments that are occurring within areas that we plan to pave but uh they do it right they have a bible they have the equations they have the field investigation they have the science they have the institutional knowledge and like drew said every four years each quadrant of the city is evaluated because you never want the road to get past when you're going from rehabilitation well there's the three r's but i'll simplify it you want to keep the road at the rehabilitation phase or the repair phase and not the reconstruction once the, road, once the road crosses a certain life, too many cracks, water gets inside, it gets too old, you're already, at, you're already behind the curve. So, sorry, I'm um, already behind the curve. So the, the amount of money that's invested into the, the road infrastructure really is to stop the roads from getting to the point where they need full re road reconstruction, which is what Drew referred to earlier as a road preservation. Anyway, well, it's very impressive. And a thanks to you and your staff for doing such a great job. No, I, ha I have to say, you know, even, even during COVID, Excuse me, I'm sorry, Bella. Sorry, um, ten and a half year old English bulldog. Um, I was going to blame Jessica for her dog, but she's muted. No, I'm, I'm, I'm taking this one. This is this one's on me. Um, but yeah, you, you, even even over the last year, uh, like I said, with COVID, the staff has worked tirelessly. The contractors have done a great job. The consultants have done a great job. And um, you know, like I said, we had basically the same budget for paving. We did increase curbs and sidewalks, especially with the Woodward Avenue sidewalk. But um, I would say just more efficiencies in the program, doing things a little bit differently. Um, managing the consultants and the contractors a little bit better, but yeah, I don't. It wasn't. It wasn't coincidence that those numbers went up. I mean, that was a testament to your council and, uh, and my department. I agree, with Tom. Thank you, Anthony. Uh, it is well, especially with COVID being this year and everybody half staff or short staff. Uh, sorry, Barbara. I didn't yeah, mean to I, you. Um, yeah. Thanks, George. Uh, Chairman uh, Sirianides. Uh, yeah, I just also like to take a moment to commend you, uh, your work, um, Anthony, um, and just note that you know this is exactly the kind of thing we were hoping for with the reorganization um, to find where we can you know find those efficiencies and um, and with your expertise, it's it's really tremendous. So uh, well done. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Well, Anthony, again, thank you very much. Thanks for the quick report and it's, it's a very impressive numbers. So, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, that leaves item B, monthly solid waste report, October, uh, September through October, 2020. How are we doing? Garbage down or? <laughs> I'll, I'll give you the cliff Wait. notes. Uh, compared to the same time last year, our total MSW, which is municipal solid waste, AKA garbage is up 21% as expected due to COVID, everyone being home, uh, working remotely, kids staying home uh, more so. I know some of them are doing a little bit of a hybrid, but uh, here in New York, most of the schools are full remote. Um, and every, but on, on the conversely, the um, recycling has also increased too by approximately 16% from this same time last year. Again, we could attribute it to be people being more sustainable or just people being home more. But either way, it's nice to see the solid waste number go up, which we expected due to COVID. But it's also nice to see that even during the pandemic, people are still recycling. And it's actually gone up from last year, which again, I think people are more conscious now that they're home because there might not be enough space in the, <laughs> to shove everything in the garbage either. So 
it, it forces people to be a little bit more sustainable and, and think a little bit more about the environment. So both numbers are up, no surprise. But also the, rev the revenue is also up, which is a good thing. And when I say the, rev the recycling revenue uh, that's generated uh, from curbside pickup and, that, and, and the recycling that's brought to the transfer station directly, uh, that revenue is up about 16%. You know, and, and generally we, we, we make about $150,000 a year on our recycling, giving or give, give or take, but we're, we're on par to, to, to uh, see about a 16% increase in the revenue. Well, again, it's good to see people being responsible in recycling. I know the, the food compost program has taken off too. So it just goes to show people are home and they are being conscious about. Yes, the, the, the composting program has done, done great. Uh, it's doing very well. We're uh, a third into the year, the operating budget, and we've only expended about 35% of the budget. So what we've spent and how far we are into the year is on par. Uh, the transfer station sees about 40% of the action and the Rowing Community Center sees about 60% of the action. I think that's very good. And uh, we have increased, we have re submitted a request for an increase in our operating budget for that particular pilot program uh, for the upcoming fiscal year 22 operating budget. So it's only a few thousand dollars, but since the program is successful, uh, we don't want to start it. We, we want to see it grow. All right. Great. Uh, anybody else want to add anything or have any questions? Okay. Awesome. We got a pretty early night for public works. Go us. So our next meeting will be Tuesday, January 5th, 2021. Can't believe it's already going to be 2021, but I'm sure everybody's ready to see this year come to an end. <laughs> 7 p.m. And most likely it will still be a Zoom. But if it changes and it's not going to be a Zoom, we'll let everybody know. Uh, other than that, I'd like to wish everybody happy holidays, even though most likely I'll see everyone before then. But just happy holidays if I don't and have a great new year. You too.